start the recording and we can start with the uh, roll call okay. or call to order, sorry. Okay, I'll call the meeting to order at 5.30. Uh, roll call. Chair Lane. Here. Vice Chair Hodges. Here. Commissioner Pichot. Here. Okay. okay, and for the uh, special announcement regarding public comment, please wait for the commission chair to ask for speakers at each item. When it's time, please use the raise your hand function online to request to speak. If you're attending by telephone, please press star nine. You will be unmuted online or your area code and last two digits of your phone number will be called when it's time for you to speak. Please be aware that personal commission rule 2.9a states that employees, employee organizations, or other interested parties will be provided reasonable opportunity to present their views orally. Your comments should not exceed three minutes. Yeah, Christy, just your screen is, it's, it's I see black. Yeah, with a white line down the middle. With the white line uh -oh. down the middle? Yeah. yeah. Weird. My share screen? Yeah. 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 There. Oh, no. there we go. Okay, sorry. I'm working on two screens and I just moved it over real quick. So, okay. Okay. All right. Um, Next one, approve the agenda. Can I have a motion that we approve tonight's agenda? I move to. Go ahead, Pat. Go ahead. go ahead, Andy. Okay. I move to approve the agenda for tonight's meeting on March. I, sec I second. It's been moved and second. Is there any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Um, Personal commission comments. Yeah. Oh, there I am. Okay. Sorry. It's been a day. Um, personnel commission comments. Andy, do you have any comments? Yeah, just a quick comment. I'm very glad that the American Rescue Act passed and that the schools will be getting some money, much needed and deserved. And I hope it helps to uh, bring us back in person very soon. Hey, Pat. Oh, well, happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. And I concur with Andy that um, here's hoping that um, we are back in person classes, um, at least by the beginning of next year which I think is probably when it's going to be, but um, it's, I, um, hats off to everybody who's doing what they can to make it work it, um, remotely. Okay. Um, I set in on um, Leadership Hayward lesson or class today. Um, and the section today's topic was education. So um, I found it really interesting. Um, DL spoke on um, kind of the status of opening schools and where we are on that and um, teacher shots. And there was a lot, and she did a really good presentation, a lot of information. And then Jason Livingston spoke um, on Measure L and uh, he showed uh, overview of Harder Elementary and they hope to be in there by April. The school looks really nice from the pictures. And he spoke on Measure H, um, the, talked about the Performing Arts Center. It, it looks amazing. Um, talked about the new, there's, then they look, have looked at the rest of the schools, the older schools that can't be redone but are being renovated. Talked about um, the solar panels being put in new fire alarms, PA systems, roofing on the older schools, exterior painting. Um, there's 34 projects going on right now. So they're, they're really busy, but it's gonna make a big difference on, on how our district looks and is portrayed to the community and what the bond money is going for. So I found it very interesting. Okay, moving on to... Um, Comments from executive director? Uh, yes, good evening. And I do echo the same second se sentiments with regard to the passage of uh, the legislation um, uh, um, for from President Biden. Um, I, I do want to announce, uh, I'm not sure if uh, Dionisia shared today, but we uh, 
um, we have worked towards getting two uh, cohorts started. So uh, Southgate started uh, this past Monday for students. Um, it's a small group, uh, but it's, it's, you know, a phased in approach to kind of trying to get students in for in-person learning experiences. Uh, it's not meant to replace the uh, early learning, uh, I'm sorry, the distance learning component, um, but really to begin to reintegrate students back into school. Uh, Fairview will be starting tomorrow, um, and that program is going to serve um, uh, the deaf and hard of hearing. Um, so it's pretty exciting to see that happen. Um, I also want to point out that um, it's our classified staff. Um, that is really making this happen, um, supporting those programs for our paraprofessionals, our YEP staff, and our new supervisors. Um, so, so that's pretty exciting. Um, and I think that that also segues into um, a, a lot of learning that we've had to do along the way uh, with regards to um, all of the requirements that are either via um, OSHA, the CDC, um, you know, I, every everyone has a set of requirements. So um, it's, it's, provided us with, with a small, you know, but great opportunity um, to, to put our ducks in a row um, with regards to um, ensuring uh, proper ventilation, ensuring proper signage, uh, the ingress, egress being identified for each school site, um, and just really, again, beginning the process of reintegrating our students uh, because we, we are now planning towards moving um, to moving towards uh, with our labor partners. Uh, we do want to provide additional uh, early learning experiences for our, uh, I'm sorry, in-person learning experiences for our students. Um, we had a town hall on Monday uh, that went over, went over this um, and, and we will need, you know, certificated staff to be part of that. Um, and uh, we're just really looking forward to it. We know that there's going to be a lot of work um, that has to happen, but we are aiming for about a mid-April date um, and starting that process with uh, our initial to get our kindergarten through second grade students um, onto campus, um, but, be but, but really working towards making that opportunity available to all families. Um, so we do have two active surveys out there, one for families uh, with regards to what is their choice in the event that we do offer in-person learning experiences for the rest of this year. Again, it won't replace uh, distance learning that we've committed to for the, till the end of the year, um, but it would be something that would help um, provide additional support for, for the day's lessons. Um, and then with the second question for staff being around um, just ensuring that they have a clear understanding that it is Hayward Unified School District's intentions uh, to open uh, for in-person student learning um, for the 21-22 school year. Um, so again, uh, these, these are opportunities for us to begin to phase in students um, and really do that. And then the, and then, so in the survey, we, so next to the staff survey, we have a uh, student and family survey that is essentially based around the same questions, but really around if we offer in-person uh, learning would families be interested. Um, because of the requirements, um, it's kind of a, a, a one-shot chance for them to say yes. Um, because uh, the, the, uh, you, you want to have uh, same groupings. You don't want to mix groupings for students. Um, so either they commit to it or they don't, and, and that's okay. But again, uh, what we want to make sure is that we're, we're at least offering a, a, an opportunity and a choice for our, our families um, and, and our communities. Um, so uh, I think that that's pretty much it uh, concludes my, uh, my comments. Um, and, and I'm sure there's other stuff that's happening, but, um, you know, again, as, as you said, uh, I think it was Diane, like, or I'm not sure, you know, we're, we're just commending the, the work that folks are doing. We're really trying to, to continue to keep it happening and happening in this remote um, environment. But um, we, we really do look forward to getting back to um, normal. Um, oh, and oh, here's my last one. My last one is, I know that Dio shared this, but I also want to share this uh, for folks. Uh, we have partnered um, with uh, La Familia, has reached out to us, uh, counseling uh, for vaccination uh, um, um, appointments, as well as um, with the Alameda County Office of Education. I'm not sure if I mentioned this the last time. I think a month ago, we were in a different place, but we were scrambling to get information. Uh, we were offering codes. Um, to our educators. Uh, we've been surveying them with regards to what, if they want um, um, information for that or if, you know, if they want us to send them a code. So we're, we're actively partnering and just really trying to support the vaccination process. At this point, it, it is not a requirement and we
we don't foresee it being a requirement by the school district. Uh, we don't know what the legislature may eventually say and we become enforcers of that. Um, but up until now, we, we don't ask. Uh, it's, it's really, it's a, it's a personal decision that folks make, uh, but we do wanna make sure that um, through our leveraging of partnerships that we can facilitate as many folks um, that would like to be vaccinated as possible uh, through the appropriate channels. And that concludes, that really concludes my comments. Okay, that sounds really positive. That's a big step. Can I have asked just a quick question? At Southgate, what are the um, students being, um, which students are being um, um, brought in for the small group cohorts there? I you know, I, I, I believe it's about a third grade. I don't know exactly, but it wasn't built around, um, it wasn't as um, uh, narrow of a focus as the DHH program over at Fairview. Um, so so, so with, with that in mind, I believe it, I think they're third graders that they're providing uh, services for. Um, mm -hmm. And again, enrichment opportunities and, and really just that reintegration and, and um, we, we just, we think it's exciting. It's, it's kind of like, you know, you, as you all mentioned, harder, harder elementary or school sites. And well, it, it's, it's interesting to think that all of that has just been happening on the peripheral as we've been kind of going through this. Um, in, in typical years, we would go out and we would visit school sites and we would visit construction sites and see them along the way. So it's, it's, I think in, in the midst of all of this, you know, um, I, it, it, it had skipped past me to kind of say, you know what, maybe I need to go take a drive over to Mount Eden and, and I want to check out the Performing Arts Center or, or to Harder. So to see kids entering our facilities is just, it's, a, it's an incredible time for us, I think. It's, it's the, the, one of the most basic things, um, but it's super exciting. So um, kudos to them, the staff, uh, for making that happen, for uh, FMOT, for, for ensuring the safety protocols and procedures. Um, and again, to our classified staff, because our certificated teachers aren't participating in those two programs. I think it's an exciting time. I mean, it's totally different, new things that you've got to look at and new buildings and it's some real positive things for a change. It's, I think it's exciting. Yeah. Okay, um, general public comments. Christy, do you um, want to? Sure. Uh, so the public comment section of the agenda provides an opportunity for the public to address the personnel commission on any item of interest that is within the personnel commission's jurisdiction. Comments are welcome. However, please be advised that the commission is prohibited by law from taking any action on an item brought by the speaker that is not currently listed on this agenda. Uh, you can use your raise, the ha raise your hand function or the star nine on your telephone. Um, and comments will not ex should not exceed uh, three minutes. And I don't see anybody with their hand raised, so we can move on. Okay, consent agenda. Could I have a motion to accept the consent agenda? Um, I move to approve the consent agenda for tonight's meeting. Okay, uh, second. I second. Any discussion? Um, I think I had one, but I don't remember now what it was. I didn't write it down. Some, it was on the uh, recruitment status report. Of course, I usually have a question on that. So, okay. Know, Christy, can you pull that up? Yeah, hold on one second. My okay. cat is destroying something over here. I don't know what she's gotten into, <laughs> but hold on one second. <laughs> no problem. Okay. Um, I guess it was the, um, the up near the top, I thought, or maybe go down the next, it was filled, or no, on hold. Oh, Director of Child Nutrition. So what's going on with that? I'm just curious. Uh, so, so um, we, that has been placed on hold, um, you know, given the, the pandemic itself, um, it, it really threw us into a loop. Um, one of the um, most uh, budget uh, heavy uh, um, um, areas, you know, it, it, I think that they're, uh, I forget budget 13, cafeteria 13 or something to that extent. Because of the way that the legislation across the state came across, uh, came forth, um, the district had to carry several positions um, so we went from serving 20,000 students uh, meals a day um, to about 1,500 um, while still having to carry our entire workforce. 
Um, so one of the mm -hmm. most prudent kind of decisions to be made was that when Robin uh, retired uh, last year was that uh, we would go on hold um, for the director of child nutrition, uh, given that uh, we weren't running a full scale operation. Um, we needed to take some cost saving measures um, and that was one of them. Um, so we do anticipate towards op to opening that, but um, that has been on hold for this, this, this past school year. Okay, all right, I just, just curious. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other discussion? All those in favor of accepting the consent agenda say aye. Aye. Aye, opposed? Okay. Information and discussion, classified staffing report. Okay, this is our typical staffing report that goes to the board. Um, and we have been hiring just a few people here in our maintenance and operations department. Um, we were able to hire a, another tech support. I'm not too sure if Fernando wants to talk about um, the tech support specialist here. So I think last meeting I spoke uh, the, the, what's additional tech support specialist, uh, Aaron? Yeah. Was that, that was an additional position that the district uh, established um, to support the process. And that is in addition to, I think I spoke about the tech team last time that we had developed to support students and families. Um, so Alan, Alan uh, plan, Alan worked with uh, Les and kind of developed a team of, of positions that would uh, work with our families because the school district went from, you know, having computers at the school sites to all of a sudden we became a one-to-one -one district, you know, one computer for every student. And the um, need uh, for support uh, was pretty incredible. Um, so uh, we're using some of the additional funds um, to hire um, um, a, a team that is composed of a, a family engagement outreach equity specialist, um, a data technician, a database uh, uh, specialist and, and a uh, TSS-1 uh, that can help with both the intake of families, um, depending on if it's a, uh, if it's a uh, uh, operations, uh, like kind of if it's a hardware issue, the TSS-1 can address that. And if it's something that has to do with our own database and kind of access points, uh, the database specialist will be able to assist in that. So um, we really have had to invest a lot of money in our uh, technology uh, department. Um, and this uh, tech two position was, was one that, again, that's apart from this three person team that uh, we're currently uh, uh, filling uh, positions for. Okay. That's just information items. So we can go to the next one. Okay, preliminary operating budget for year 2021 to 2022. So every March we bring forth a, a budget to the personnel commission and um, you know, we, it's, it's based on, on our rules uh, and it also sets it up so that when we have our public hearing in May um, and you know, it's, it's pretty much the same as, as last year with some slight adjustments. And so you can see them side by side. Um, benefits, statutory benefits do go up um, for next year from 21, 22. And then we might have a few step in, um, step increases uh, for folks, um, but uh, all in all, um, we're pretty much in alignment. Um, we're really working to keep it under $1 million. That's a joke, but um, we're just shy of it. <laughs> I think when I first started, the budget was like 740,000 and I'm just watching it grow and just- Well, that's mostly salaries though. Yeah. So um, other than that, I, I, I will say this, um, you know, we, we, we're, we're obviously have funds that we haven't been spending. Um, but with that said, um, based on our recent um, appeals process, you know, we still do carry um, some bills for that because we have to fund uh, the hearing officer side and the such. But um, I don't think we fully have planned yet on the event that, you know, we're going to uh, entertain a lot of appeals um, and the such. But this is just kind of a, is a bare bones um Keeping it, keeping it all kind of in, internal, um, and and again, um, aside from any kind of like appeals or processes, uh, we don't anticipate um, using all of this, um, other than like some of our fixed costs, which are like around our salaries. Okay. Just, yeah. Okay. 
Any questions? I commend you for trying to keep it within last year. I know that's not easy with rising costs, so appreciate that. Yeah, our, our biggest our biggest change was going from 31% to 33.2%, I think it is, or something to 33.5, I forget, I, uh, for statutory benefits. So that's the back end cost for every employee, for every classified employee now. Um, it's, a, it's just over 33% for the school district. So it's that hidden cost that no one sees when they see their salary um, that the district is on the hook for that, you know, goes towards, um, you know, their, their various uh, statutory benefits, uh, including their retirement. Um, this, this, oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Oh, so, so this, this next item is I, I bring forward to, uh, the fourth to the personnel commission. It is the, um, the hiring of a, uh, professional expert. Um, so as you'll recall, the last, uh, personnel commission meeting, um, we went through the process of finalizing the job description and component for the, um, health and safety, uh, uh, coordinator for the district. Um, and what we have found in going through that process is, is that uh, the district really needs to bring someone in um, that can serve as a professional expert that can lay some of the groundwork uh, for that person to assume uh, as, as we move forward. Um, so it's really to look at someone who's familiar with logistics, uh, with systems um, and structures uh, to the new services that are due to COVID-19. Um, and, and also, you know, we someone who's got some um, um, technology uh, background as well that can assist in, in those endeavors. So uh, this is this is a, a individual. Uh, his, his name is I want to say Dax Shepard, but it's Dax uh, 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 Kajiwara. Kajiwara. Uh, Dax Shepard is an actor, um, and um, uh, he comes in with 14 years of ex educational technology experience, um, and and uh, he came out of. Um, out of Dublin. Um, so we're bringing him on board so that he can, uh, again, lay some of the groundwork, uh, the foundation work around the requirements for COVID-19. You know, the, the issue that we have with, with the COVID-19 and the requirements is, is that uh, per Cal OSHA, um, we have to maintain all reporting requirements at least through 2023, which means that we have to have a massive integration of not only within our student information systems, um, but as well as how we are doing the um, the uh, what, what is it what is it called the contact tracing uh, components for our staff. Um, so that's going to require you know this integration of technology that you know staff are going to have to check in on a daily basis. Uh, students are going to have to check in. Um, you know there's going to be the whole screening piece that goes along with it. So there's going to be this folding of information. Um, and then it's also going to be around where, where folks have been. So um, we've looked at a few systems that are out there. Um, and, and our reality of it is, is that um, we need someone who has more of an expertise that, again, can come in, put these things and help us put these in place um, with regards to the technology piece. And then the other component that goes along with this is um, the testing requirements. Um, setting up the, the logistics for testing um, and determining whether we do that internally here, here within the district or whether we contract with a, an external group that maybe is more familiar with testing, testing protocols and, and logistics. Um, we really wanna uh, be able to, to have someone look at that with a fine eye. Um, and, and with that said, you know, I, I think if anything, it speaks to, um, we wanted to be able to hire for this position, but kind of find that there's more groundwork that needs to be done so that we can fully flesh out what our uh, manager of uh, health and safety would, would actually be working with. Um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a huge task, uh, one that um, puts the district online for, you know, again, ensuring that we're meeting compliance. Um, and, uh, you know, based on his experiences and, and what he brings to the table, uh, we've, we've solicited the services of Mr. Uh, uh, Kajiwara um, to assist in that endeavor. Did you, did you put this out kind of to bid or did, did someone know this person? No, we, we how, didn't. How was Mr. Kajiwara selected? Uh, we didn't we didn't put it out to bid because we're not actually hiring him as as an employee so it wouldn't go through the whole merit er, and and um meritocracy typically so the, no, I, wasn't uh, just, I was just wondering how how his name came up so times. so um alan um through casbo um the california association of school business officials and and contacts uh was able to link up with him 
um, mm -hmm. and kind of, you know, determine if he could meet our needs. It, it would be similar if we would have hired a consultant um, for, for the process. Um, and that's essentially what, what he's done. You know, we've kind of like tasked with what, what, what was needed. Um, and typically you hire a professional expert only when you don't have an existing classification, um, that can do, that does the work. And at this point, because we need him in so many areas, um, to again, lay, lay the, the, the groundwork for what we're doing in our current EIT department is saturated. Um, with student, family, and staff needs around technology, um, this was the best avenue for the district because what we didn't want to do, Andy, was hire a manager of health and safety. Um, and because I think at that time when it first came about and it was everyone was, we were jumping on it, um, we, we, we gradually became very aware of like, there, there's just a lot of groundwork that has to be laid before you bring someone in, um, unless it's already been done before. And the reality of it is, is that, it's a new position and, and as we determine the tech requirements, uh, the uh, inf systems in information integration uh, needs, um, we, we just, we, we sought out someone and Alan was able to identify um, Mr. Kajiwara. I'm just wondering too, is, is he working, does he have a position currently or at this no. point? He would he, he'll be working 100% on this. He, he would be working 100% with us. Yes, he would basically take the lead and we would work with him. Um, the, last, the last professional expert that we had was, um, was Neil uh, Rauschuber, um, who sat in during our absence of having a director of FMOT. Um, and Neil came in and, and we also had a uh, absence of our bond, uh, bond coordinator. Um, and we brought Neil in and Neil was with the district for, I don't know, about six, about five months, um, assisting in the transition. And Neil was doing both sides. He was doing the FMOT side as well as managing the, the work of the bond. So it's kind of similar. He came in with that background um, and, and it allowed the district to make that transition to, to our, our new person. And that's kind of what we expect to happen as well with this position okay. or with this person. Cause I don't want to call it a position um, it's just more of this person, and this is why we're bringing him on. Okay. So uh, this, at this point, I'm, I guess the the board already knows about this. Uh, it's 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 more of a um, this is the uh, the purview of the uh, of the personnel commission because oh, okay. the personnel commission is is role is to oversee the classified services and to ensure that the district is following appropriate procedures with regards to taking on the work of the classified unit. And that's why in this instance, the rule exists that if there isn't a job description that matches what the need is, this is an avenue that we're able to use. And that's why I bring it forth. So, so with regards to that, I, I, ex, I suspect um, that Alan has looped in the board. I'm not sure, but, but, but with that said, you know, executive cabinet is aware of the work that we're doing and I'm sure Matt lets the board know. So um, we're, we're not doing anything that is um, um, not above board at all. Oh, yeah. No pun intended. No, I was just wondering her, whose purview this was. So I'm sorry? It's, I just was interested in whose purview this was. I so I guess it's ours. This is, this is, this is, um, I'll say R as a collective. Um, this is our purview because, uh, again, this is uh, work that um, doesn't fall under the certificated area um, or require any additional special certification that from like CTC. Um, this would be classified type work, but it is work that we don't have a current job uh, uh, description, and it's and it's supposed to be kind of short term. It's not meant to be this long term um, mm -hmm. ongoing um, um, arrangement. It's just more so. Um, it's, it's filling in a need that we could have also gone through a consultant um, and they could have gone that role as well. Um, but I think what we typically like to do, especially in the classified world is, um, is, is bring in, in, in these experts and, and kind of treat it as that, as this recognition that this is classified type work. It falls under the personnel commission. Um, and then we bring it forth, uh, for, for your, um, for, for your approval or, or essentially for your, I, I wouldn't even say approval, but so that you're aware of kind of what we're doing for the district. Okay. And so, this will also go on the staffing report for the board. Yeah. As a, as a, um, as a substitute type position, cause it's not an actual, um, it's on our probationary 
position, it would be more of like a miscellaneous position. That's the way you usually we report it. Ready? He'll be start. He's cleared. He's done all of those uh, those pieces. So it hasn't gone to board yet. This would be the first step. Okay, well, um, I just wanted because the, the contractor, whatever the said that March first. So that's. Uh, yeah, that I was when he came in and he has started already. I, I don't know if he's started. I know that he's cleared. Um, I can definitely go back and, and check. Well, uh, I, was just, I was just interested. Mm -hmm. you know, I just, I so um, it, it says in the document that he'll be here six months and possibly um, extended. Is that right? Uh, you know, it, it, that certainly is possible, but I think once we reach that marker, and as I shared with Alan, you know, uh, anytime we do anything that is going to be of limited term nature, um, especially when we talk about the classified services, it's done in blocks of about six months uh, okay. being the maximum. Um, and if we need to revisit something that is, is longer, that we'll, we'll do that in the future. Uh, but I will definitely ensure that I give you know you, you all a heads up and then also determine um, if, if that's an appropriate avenue for us to, to follow. It, it just seems like um, there's so much if he gets all this in six months, there's a lot to be done. <laughs> We, I mean, I mean, the, does he have a big ass on his chest? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, the good thing is, is that we have, we meet like, um, I, we, and there's, it's, it's, it's just the acronyms, but we have a BSHR meeting, uh, business services and HR every Friday, um, which includes, um, you know, uh, Rosemary, who is our um, coordinator of risk and benefits. You know, Alan is part of that, um, HR staff with regards to myself, Kim and Aurora, my uh, uh, certificated counterpart. Um, so we have actually been looking at a lot of these various programs um, and some of them are actually integrated. They just have to be built um, for our school district in particular. So like right now we use a frontline ASOP management system um, and they all, and, and ASOP is actually, it works with uh, is owned. I think escape is now owned by frontline as well. Um, they also have a system that's, that we could potentially use um, that integrates this information um, um, but it's, it's a tying that in. So there's all the staff, there's, there's the training. Um, there's a person who has to understand kind of the nuts and bolts, the bigger picture, and then backwards map as to how to, how to uh, put that in place. Um, but yeah, there, there is a lot of work that has to be done. That's on that piece. Um, but then, but then we have other areas that we're looking to tie in, uh, especially as we're looking at more techniques for the district. And then how are we using technology, um, to, um, to, to maintain and, can, and contain and maintain um, our records, uh, especially under the COVID-19 requirements. And his uh, references, you feel he's really qualified? Yes, uh, Alan went through um, and Alan's pretty good. He hasn't, he's, he's, he hasn't done us wrong. And uh, we, we feel that uh, we have uh, an individual that can carry out the work and the services that we need. And then, and then I think the nice thing is that we're pretty, we're pretty focused on, on what we need. Um, and I think that that's the helpful piece, you know, again, the, the systems integration, um, a, as well as someone who is going to um, look at the logistics and whether, again, it makes sense for the district to, to, to do its own um, in partnership with Curative uh, for employee testing, or whether it makes better sense for the district to just go external for that um, and not go into the testing business for ourselves because that's its own issue as to who's going to be doing the testing. You know, we have 32 sites. It, it, it's, it has its own um, 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 uh, issues and concerns with that. Would it be more costly for a consultant rather than going this way? You know, it, it depends because uh, what ends up happening sometimes is that when you do have professional experts, um, oftentimes um, you're, you're getting individuals that haven't set themselves up as a consultant and haven't set up the business back end side of it. Um, and typically what ends up happening is consultants typically are more because they set themselves up with business costs. Um, you know, you 1099 them. There's a different approach. Whereas when we utilize a, a, a professional uh, expert, you you treat them like you would an employee, um, and then they're there, and 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 it's kind of it's still negotiable in terms of the terms and everything. But typically, it doesn't have all the back end operating costs that a consultant would charge because of their business, 
you know, they have to carry their own insurance, they have to carry all of those things. So we get the benefit of the expertise uh, without that and without carrying the person on as a uh, permanent track or a permanent employee. Okay, I have just one more question. I think any, before anyone else has other questions. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, I, I got a couple of them. Okay. Um, is this something we have? Is this something we have to approve? No, it's it's more so something that I, I bring to the commission to make you aware, um, so that you're aware that uh, this is you know that this is this is something that the district is is bringing forth. But, but just so that you know, I am working in conjunction with with Allen and with the school district uh, for this because again, just as I said, your role is to oversee the uh, the classified services. My role is. That's my job on the ground here at the district offices. Um, and it's also to keep you apprised of it um, through ensuring that I place it on the on the agenda. And then um, other question is the, the um, job description that we had approved at the last meeting. Um, has anybody been hired for that job or is no. that kind of on hold now or what? So, so that's another thing that played into the decision was because we did run a recruitment um, we still haven't yielded a field of, uh, and, and I think Debbie's on, but I'm, I'm, my recollection is we were going to have to go back out uh, for recruitment to, to be able to yield uh, the ranks uh, that would be necessary for the hiring manager. But we also found that the more we learned, the more we realized that, you know, are we looking for the right person given our current understandings of, of what the needs are going to be for the job? Um, and because of all of the technology and all of the, the background pieces that go along with it, as well as the implementation of the logistics piece, um, we wanted to put that in place so that we can create a better, for lack of a better term, a better mousetrap um, so that we can catch that person, you know, because that's where the, where it's really important that we, we, we uh, set up the right technical questions in our, in our technical interview. And, and if Debbie sends out supplemental questions that our questions are in alignment with what we're really looking for, um, you know, based on the uh, knowledge, skills and, and abilities. So what we may end up doing um, based on our learning from this is we may end up bringing that job description back and maybe doing some tweakings uh, to the knowledge, skills and abilities uh, component of it. Like we know what needs to be done, but now we really look at, okay, what's the breadth of requirements um, so that we, we market it and, and uh, advertise it in such a way and that we assess um, and, and, um, and uh, determine eligibility through the right testing uh, protocols. One last okay. question. How was it determined that it was going to be paid per diem, like $700 per day, as opposed to like a lump sum because I did a calculation and depending on what days like another day, if you go with like a work week he would make like 92 four but if you went like calendar days he'd make like almost one hundred twenty nine thousand dollars so I was just wondering basically how is it determined that you didn't just do a contract amount as opposed to a seven hundred dollars a day so, so, so typically what we would what we would do, Andy, is we would look at maybe a similar type scope position or kind of a roundabout. Uh -huh. um, and, and the $700 is inclusive of uh, taking into consideration the 33% that I mentioned back on the budget piece uh, with regards to um, um, to the statutory benefits. Because if he was an employee in a district and let's say he left his job and he came to work here, then, you know, he's he has a full back end piece that we have to be competitive. Um, and then with regards to um, determining um, a per diem basis versus a lump sum, typically a per diem is, is means that that's what you're getting for each day that you're working. Whereas a lump sum, you can have someone that comes in and just, I completed the task and it's not tied to any days of service or anything. So by going per diem and, and doing it this way, we essentially have access to them. And again, we can utilize them as if he were one of our employees, because he does work for us. Um, so we have that access, we have the ability to schedule him for meetings. Uh, we have the ability to do all of those things um, and track it and follow it on a, on a daily basis um, versus looking at a um, project kind of like a, a metric and saying, okay, where are you at on the project? And then we pay you according to how far you've gotten along that project. So that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna pay him as long as far as you got on the project or He's just going to no. turn in a timesheet? No, he'll, he'll be paid. He he'll, 
He'll 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 invoice us. Uh, I believe I believe it's an invoicing that he does because I don't think he does a regular time card. Mm -hmm. um, and then it will be based on the days. And then Alan is the one who tracks that. Okay, just just hmm? I didn't know how this worked. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it was never. I've never had to. I mean, I've I've done it as my job as a compliance officer, but I've never had it happen here. So I didn't know how how it was decided for you know cost and everything. Yeah, and, and, and typically what you do is you look at like your similar positions or similar type or at least in that range on that scope of work and the kind of work he's doing um, is, isn't is about the range of like what one of our coordinators would be doing. Um, and, and then so when you look at like what their daily rate is and all of those things, you take into consideration the, the, uh, the, the, the back end benefits that he might not be getting somewhere else, but then you have to, you know, you, you kind of have to build something in there. And I think if anything, to be honest with you, um, the, the, the amount that, um, he's being paid on a daily rate, I think is, is, is competitive. If not, he might've undersold himself. This has been recorded. But. So this is what he asked for. Yeah, this is what what he yeah. and, and Alan worked out. Yep. Okay. All right. I didn't know how it was determined. Yeah. But okay. And you accepted that. Okay. Yeah, I'm 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 fine with it because again, it's it's about it it's it's it puts us where we are. So if if you calculate like a a coordinator, I think the range is from like 125 to 145. Um, they are paid for 261 days, which includes uh, 20 two days of vacation, 15 paid holidays, and then I think they do 224 days of service, but they're paid for every single day. Um, that daily rate ends up working out to, let me see, one, let's say at the top end of the scale, mm -hmm. 145 plus 33% divided by 261. That's seven hundred and thirty-eight dollars a day that our employees cost us. But that's for a year. That's for a year, but that's this why we break into. But that's this is a but, six month period. That's why but, I was wondering. No, no, but that's why we. But 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 per diem rate is what he's oh, charging okay. us. Per diem. Their okay. per diem okay. rate is seven hundred thirty-eight dollars. Per diem is per diem. Apples and apples. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's what I did. Got it. <laughs> All right. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, we'll move on to action items, ratification of eligibility list. I move that we uh, approve the eligibility list for the lead campus safety officer and paraeducation so severely handicapped. I second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Okay. Public comments on closed session agenda items. Um, I don't think we only have Debbie and Jackie here and I don't think there's really anything on the agenda, but okay. um, I will read it anyway. Uh, this section of the public, uh, the personal commission agenda provides the opportunity for comments from members of the general public on the items which will be presented in closed session. If anyone from the general public has a comment on any of the items that will be discussed prior to the commission's adjournment to closed session, please let us know at this time. Um, and then, like I said, there's nothing on the um, the agenda that would require us to reconvene an open session. So if you would like to go ahead and adjourn the meeting, okay. we can do so. Um, I will adjourn the meeting at 614. Okay. And we'll go to closed session. Okay, see you in okay. a bit. Great. <coughs> Thank you for joining us, Debbie and Jackie. Bye, Debbie. Bye, Bye Jackie. <laughs>